Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be covering Hardware. He made his first appearance in the self-titled Hardware, issue number one, that was released in April of 1993. His real name is Curtis, or Kurt Metcalf, and he's a brilliant human inventor and scientist that stands six feet one inch tall and weighs 170 pounds, having brown eyes and black hair. Although he does stand six feet six inches tall while in armor and weighs 860 pounds. Although the newer iteration of his suit contains technology that makes him seem more like 37 pounds. Now, Curtis's extreme genius level intellect makes him one of the most intelligent scientific minds on Earth. Being considered an absolute prodigy when he was younger and growing to be one of the foremost experts in the fields of metallurgy, computer science, and nanotech. His elite mind was also one of the very few to be able to study and reverse engineer devices that were found upon Icon's life pod, basically making him the only one that could fully understand this advanced alien technology. This extreme intellect, in addition to good physical conditioning, also led to him being a very good hand-to-hand -hand combatant, being trained in multiple martial arts by his father. Now, Curtis has developed a very complicated and advanced suit of armor called the Hardware, which has had progressively more advanced iterations over the years, such as Mark 2.0, Mark 3.0, and so on, very similar to how Iron Man has multiple iterations to his suits. The Hardware armor basically comes in two different layers, the foundational layer being called the Shell, and it consists of a custom-made plasticized metal alloy that coats him from head to toe. Once this skin-type material sets, it gives him superhuman durability, being highly resistant to lower caliber firearms, as well as low-level energy attacks. This layer also contained artificial muscle polymer fibers, which greatly increased his strength, initially giving him the ability to lift around 5 tons, but later iterations would give him even higher moderate superhuman strength, ultimately being able to lift more like 40 to 50 tons. And in addition to this increased strength, durability, and even speed, these muscle fibers could even be programmed to remember certain martial arts moves, which could then be automatically triggered when he's in certain hand-to-hand -hand combat situations. Now, the second external armor layer of his hardware system is stored within the nanorobot housing pods in his helmet and shoulder pads. All of these systems are quickly built by the microscopic nanorobots that are released via the main control systems in his helmet, and are all powered by uniquely designed high-efficiency battery packs that are housed in his shoulder pads. These systems contain his onboard computer known as Dolby, aka Digital Onboard Integrated Electronics, and the Dolby then helps control his plasma whip, retractable sword, and jetpacks, in addition to his multi-purpose forearm-mounted weapon called the Omni Cannon, which itself can deploy a variety of ordinances, ranging from high explosives to minimal concussive shocks. Now, mind you, all of his systems get better and better over time, also becoming more adaptable to whatever the occasion will call for, such as him developing red solar lasers for use on a mission where he thought he may face Superman. And not to be caught unprepared in his normal civilian identity, Curtis is also known to stay fully strapped with an assortment of personal weapons of his own design, such as a wristwatch that contains something very similar to a small Omni Cannon within it. Now, Curtis was born into one of the poor neighborhoods of Dakota City. Growing up, Curtis would be far more concerned with scientific things than playing around like other kids his age. And by the age of 12, his genius had already caught the attention of Edwin Alva, who was the head of Alva Technologies and considered to be one of the most brilliant inventors of his time. Alva would fund Curtis's education at one of the top private schools in the nation, with the young man going on to graduate from high school at 14 and getting his first college degree at age 15. Over the years, Curtis would grow to admire Alva more and more and would eventually consider him like a father figure, with Alva eventually paying for all six of Curtis's degrees. But in return, he just asked that he would come work for him after he was done. Curtis would understandably take up this offer with his mentor and would be given a nice little salary, his own lab, his own private staff, and basically having an unlimited budget to do whatever he wanted. This paid off very well for Alva Technologies, with Curtis's inventions earning the company billions of dollars over the next few years. But after Curtis approached Alva to renegotiate his deal and share a little bit more of the profits from his inventions, 
Alva showed his true cold-hearted colors, letting Curtis know that he was more like a useful dog than a valuable family member to him. This angered and humiliated the young genius, and although he thought to quit his job, he discovered that his contract forbade him from ever working with any other rival company, and that Alva owned all of his inventions, present and future. Not being satisfied with this, Curtis would dig into Alva's personal records, hoping to find something that he could blackmail him with to get out of this contract. This is when he would discover that his supposedly altruistic mentor was one of the biggest crime bosses in the world, even having the police and politicians paid off so that there's nothing that could be done about it. After much thought and planning, Curtis would take matters into his own hands and scrounge together enough materials and ordnance to make his own armored suit to fight this massive criminal threat himself. Hardware was born, and he would quickly become one of Alva's top enemies, taking down many of his illegal facilities and running through all of his cohorts and thugs. The irony in all of this is that much of Hardware's technology was actually facilitated by Alva's own resources, which Curtis secretly took. Around this period is when Curtis would also be approached by Augustus Freeman IV, aka the powerful alien named Icon, who wanted to see if he could help him repair some of the systems on his spaceship. While studying and repairing some of the parts of this craft, Curtis would acquire some technology that would be useful to him, such as the inertial winder, which would increase his own perceived strength and speed. Hardware would continue his fight against Alva's corrupt empire and other villains, although he would end up tempering his tactics after he was corrected by his friend and sometimes lover named Baraki Young. He would even occasionally team up with some other heroes of the Dakotaverse, such as Icon, Static, and Rocket. But one day Curtis would be thrown for a loop when Alva surprised him in his own secret lab, having discovered his identity. But instead of there being a confrontation, Alva admitted that he had very much underestimated Curtis's potential, ruthlessness, and personal courage, then offering him everything that he wanted, the money, respect, and even the new position as vice president of Alva Technologies and his heir apparent. Alva even said that if he accepted this, he would be willing to shut down all of his illegal enterprises, just as long as hardware would protect Alva's interests. Yet despite this seeming too good to be true and Curtis being suspicious of his motives, he would agree, figuring that he might as well team up with him to try to make sure things are done right from the inside. Now having full access to Alva Technology resources, Curtis would then redesign his armor again, even giving it its first test run against a powerful interdimensional being known as Rift. He would be key in stopping this menace, along with the help of Superman, Steel, and Superboy, seeing as how this was after the Worlds Collide event, which blended Dakotaverse and the mainstream DC Universe. And after the events of Final Crisis, Hardware would continue his heroic work alongside the heroic Shadow Cabinet and the Justice League of America, shutting down villains from all over this new reality. Now, due to his powers and abilities and his influence on the DC Universe, for my 1 to 10 rating, I'll give Hardware a rating of 7, which is a master rating. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join the new Sage.